So the Liberals are under a lot of pressure over this carbon pricing pause. How are people viewing the Liberals and the Prime Minister's Prime Minister, rather, after rolling back on this carbon pricing? Well, you're right to make and put emphasis on that. It's the rollback that's been hurting him with one part of the population. So people who care a lot about climate change and worry about future generations see it as a climb down on something he had promised to do. And it was, you know, eight years later, but he was finally getting to it. And as the carbon price was starting to go up this summer, strong pushback from premiers in Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick in particular, saying, look, you're not taking into account the reality of rural areas in Canada and the fact that it's often people on the lower rung who are using fuel oil to eat their homes. So Mr. Trudeau lectured everybody during the summer saying, this is what we have to do. But when it became clear, it was hurting him politically. that They were just dropping like a stone in water uh, in, in their polling numbers in Atlantic Canada. So he changed his mind. But now the people who care about climate change are upset with him. And now the people in the rest of Canada are upset with him because he's giving a break for one type of fossil fuel used in certain parts of the country, but not on another fossil fuel, which happens to be cleaner in terms of greenhouse gases. So natural gas is not going to be getting the break that's being given for the home heating oil in the, in the Atlantic provinces and elsewhere. And Mr. Trudeau has no answer to it. So he, he's been sowing the wind in Atlantic Canada. Now he's reaping the whirlwind in urban areas where people are concerned about climate change and in other areas where people use natural gas. It's been a real lose-lose for him, uh, Marcia. And on top of it, he didn't really cancel it at all for, for home heating oil. He said he's suspending it for three years, which was frankly, another way to tell people in Atlantic Canada, whatever you do, don't vote for the Liberals again, because this tax is just going to come back like a tsunami and whack you in three years' time. So it was overall ill-considered and not put in place very well. And I have a feeling that there are a couple of people called Jonathan Wilkinson, our energy minister, and Stephen Gilbo, our environment minister, who are really quite concerned about where this thing's going to end, because I find that it's going to be extremely difficult for Mr. Trudeau not to answer the pleas from premiers like Scott Moe in Saskatchewan or Doug Ford in Ontario. So good luck with that now that he's started that ball in motion. Okay, well, this is where we really tap into your insight. Because one would think that when you're going to make a major announcement like the Prime Minister did last Friday on this, that you would anticipate what the reaction will be. Yet they, there seems to be the surprise that there's blowback from other provinces, other premiers. Yeah, exactly. And that failure it didn't start last week. It started last summer. Because, you know, Tim Houston is no slouch. This guy might be relatively new to, you know, to the premiership of his province, but boy, is he proving himself to be able. And he didn't use a very strident tone. He just said, would you please look at the facts? By the way, Nova Scotia had already put in quite a bit of effort to, to lower its carbon footprint, and they were getting whacked with the full thing here on, on this carbon tax. Mr. Trudeau was having none of it. So right then and there, the people in the Prime Minister's office, the people in the Privy Council office, he's got the best people in the country in finance. They should have been looking at this saying, Mr. Trudeau, we might have to you know, let go a little bit of ballast here to, to keep our, our thing afloat. He wasn't listening. So then he, he comes up with something that he announces a week ago today. It was last Thursday. At the end of the day, I was getting called back in to do this type of hit because they were saying, no, it looks like something's coming up. At the end of the day, they're going to make an announcement on the carbon pricing. And then he got really sullen about it. And then he was giving tough interviews at the beginning of this week saying, there will be no more carve outs, no more changes, as if that was a brave stance to take once he had just done exactly that. So it, it lacked credibility. And you can see that they're scrambling quite a bit. Pierre Poilier, who's like Mr. Trudeau, is an able politician. You know, don't get me wrong. Trudeau's very good at this politics stuff. And he's proven that many times. But on this one, it is a rare misstep. And then there was the own goal, our friend and colleague, uh, Vashi Capellos on the weekend, interviewing Goody Hutchings. And she's saying, well, basically, you know, if people in Saskatchewan want to get the staff, then maybe they should elect more liberals. Uh, that's all Pierre Poitiev needed to be on this thing right away, very strongly and very ably. And I think that his call for a carbon tax, a carbon price election, yeah. of course, falls on deaf ears for people who care about reducing greenhouse gases. But for him, it's really politically paying off right now. And we've had a couple of elections on this, and Canadians have said time and again, no, they want a government that cares about climate change and that can act on it. That's why Mr. Scheer had so much trouble. That's why Mr. O'Toole had so much trouble. Poiliev, very 
brazen about this, he he would get rid of this the this carbon price overnight. But it's the only way to start forcing a reduction of uh, greenhouse gases. So we'll see whether he gets away with it all the way up until the next election. Okay. So just to wrap up, then where do you see this going next? Going to be a very tough road to hoe for Mr. Trudeau's Liberals and. If I were to look deep into my crystal ball, I'd be very worried that somebody like Stephen Gilbo, who was once a very respected environmentalist, very well known, I think he's probably having fits right now saying, you know, where do I go with this? Because I work and teach. I teach at university in environment and climate change and sustainable development. And I have been doing that since I left politics. And Mr. Gilbo, whom I've known for decades, was actually having trouble walking into rooms, you know, full of environmentalists who were just looking at their shoelaces instead of looking at him because they felt bad about the fact that he had been dragged along with a government that really wasn't getting it done. Now that they were finally about to get a good part of it done, they're backing away. And I'm not convinced that somebody with the with the strength uh, of Stephen Gilbo is, is going to stick around for this type of event if, if it continues to go that way. And I think Trudeau's going to have trouble saying no to Scott Moe and, and Doug Ford. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Tom Mulcair, our CTV News political commentator and former NDP leader and teacher. Thank you so much for being with us this morning.